Hi guys, Ree here from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you saw a recent video on my channel, you will know that at 40 years of age, I'm in the process of going through an assessment to see if I have ADHD. I keep going back and forth between, yeah, I think I probably do, and no, it's all in my head. And I guess the assessment is the only way to actually know if it's a thing or not. But I know in that video, I talked about the moment where it first occurred to me that ADHD might be a thing, where I understood how different it is in women, how many people are going undiagnosed, and why women are not being picked up, why little girls aren't being picked up. And that was a conversation I had with a friend of mine, Katie, from what Katie said, who is another blogger. And it was an Instagram Live back in 2021. It's currently March of 2024. So this was quite some time ago. And it did not even occur to me before that conversation that ADHD might be a thing for me. So I want to share that conversation with you. Um, I'm going to ask you to bear with me. It was an Instagram Live. It was quite a while ago. The audio and the visuals are not gonna be quite as crispy as you're used to on my channel but I feel that it's so valuable to share because it really was a, a light bulb moment for me. It's quite a long chat. It was a live chat I did with Katie and I just want people who want to be able to watch it to be able to watch it. But I am gonna ask you to be uh, kind with me and um, just understanding really about the audio and the visual quality because it was really difficult to download it in a decent quality from Instagram. I had some technical issues that obviously you're not going to care about so I just want to apologise to you in advance for the quality and while the audio and the visuals might not be what you're used to watching from me or listening to from me, I feel that it was such like a pivotal moment. I wanted to be able to share it with you for those that need to see it. It spoke to me and if it speaks to anyone else at all then I guess that's helpful. So without further ado we're gonna jump back in time to August of 2021 for that chat I had with Katie. So, as I was trying to say when Instagram was um, interrupting me with poor connection <laughs> we are going to be talking today about ADHD and adult women and specifically Katie's experiences of late and hopefully it will um, help some people out there who maybe have encountered some of the same difficulties that Katie has come across and maybe this is kind of I'm hoping what you would have liked to see a year ago or like 30 years ago well I wouldn't have been or that 30. Time, but you know what I mean yeah I, I mean there wasn't Instagram then but you know <laughs> there wasn't Instagram, but yeah I wish I just wish there was more information out there I certainly had no idea until January, maybe. Really? Um, I just, I always knew that I was me. It, yeah. uh, it's really difficult to describe because I've never thought of myself as being, I mean, I am odd, but I think everyone's odd, aren't they? You're all, oh, I everyone am. is odd in their own way. So I've always known that I've got little quirks, but it was only when I started, like I saw somebody on TikTok saying about it and I was like, oh, I'm so like that. That's me. Oh, that's Oh, that's me. Mm. Oh, that's me. Oh. And it's only when you compile all of the things. And I've brought my notebook with all my things. Oh. And I'll go through all of the things that that I recognised. Um, it's only when you go through and you're like, oh, okay, this adds up to something. It's not mm. just that's an oddity. Okay. That's an oddity. Because everyone has their oddities. It's not like we've all got something. I mean, you know. But, it, yeah. Um, and definitely, so, I mean, I think we're almost exactly the same age, aren't we? I mean, yeah. I will be 38 later this year. And I know when I was in school, where, where I go to, you know, where we live, um, I don't think I knew anyone that had been diagnosed with autism, ADHD. I don't think I knew those uh, words. It wasn't part of our vocabulary. Whereas now I feel that some of the children in school are getting, you know, they're getting diagnosis, they're getting things picked up. But I would say, just before we get started that in my experience, little boys are getting picked up for autism and ADHD quite yeah. easily. And girls who seem to mask things and just try and conform and fit in are not getting noticed and picked up at and this I can, time. And I can explain a little bit more of that from yeah. um, what I've, and I've spoken to the doctor mm. or the psych, uh, psychology, Psy psychiatrist, not psychologist. Okay. Slightly different there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there are reasons why boys are picked up. 
um, more. Uh, and girls generally, I think, are probably just seen as naughty if they're they're mm-hmm. like the boys, whereas the boys are like, oh, they must have ADHD. Do you know what I mean? It's um, <laughs> but yeah, I can go. So I mean, you, you asked me a question, and I will answer okay. it so honestly. What, and... what was tell us about this TikTok? I think that's where it started back in January. Okay, so I must just give a big shout out to Louise. Um, her mm-hmm. handle is Pink Pear Bear. But it was because of her. So I saw, I mean, I follow her on Instagram anyway, but it was her TikToks that shared. And so she was just sharing, she'd basically been diagnosed and that gave her the confidence then to go, I have ADHD, this is my experience. And she just did various TikToks of like, you know, just sharing the different oddities, I Mm. guess. And Mm. because I follow her anyway, I was like, oh, it's Louise. And I just started seeing it and just going and I'd comment underneath oh I'm like this and Mm. then she'd do another one I'm like this and it was only by January so she probably started posting these before Christmas Mm. um and by January I just I messaged her and I said these these add up to something for me and she's like okay and she'd written a blog post um sharing her whole experience and she's like just go away Google as much as you can and um, write down anything that is the same for you. It's the same as I've done with her, with her TikTok yeah. things. Just go, go and look at, there's not much out there for adult ADHD, uh, women, but because there isn't anything. And even for adult males, there isn't much. Right. It's like doctors go, well, if you weren't diagnosed as a child you're probably fine. And it's like, no, there's people that slip through the cracks all of the time. It wasn't a thing. Women, women, yeah. women, they just wouldn't no. put on it. They just, no. they wouldn't think. <laughs> it, and it's only us as our generation mm-hmm. that are fighting for these autism uh, diagnoses, ADHD. For me, it's been milk allergy and things. It, like, you know, my mum will go, oh, it wasn't a thing in my day. It probably was, but you just didn't know it. And us, yeah. we have... We have the internet to have shared yeah. experiences. And when I say one of the just like I'm sure there were kids, obviously there were kids that had it. It's just it was never discussed, it was never picked up, it was never I don't think teachers and parents knew anything about it to look out for it. It just wasn't on anyone's no. radar. No. And and I I I a hundred percent know it's because of the internet that it's blown oh, up yeah. like this because and, and people are going oh suddenly all these people are watching tiktoks and they think they have adhd no it's we're seeing it and i i <laughs> no. before out any of this i've had the same thing happen with the milk allergy thing so mm. my children most of them have had milk allergies and it's because i know for sure my sister had a milk allergy as a baby right. now now that i look back in hindsight i'm like my sister had it but my mum who didn't have the internet or WhatsApp to message friends or whatever. Like, she just believed her baby cried all the time and wouldn't sleep. Two years. My sister didn't sleep. She didn't nap. She didn't sleep. She cried all the time. Miserable little baby. She wasn't. She probably was in pain. My experience of that was Google, Google, Google. Why is my baby not sleeping? Why is my... And we have the information. So it's not that autism didn't exist. It's not that ADHD didn't exist. Didn't, no. All any of these things. It's just they don't... I mean, some of them do display physical uh, things. But things like asthma existed when I... You know, I knew plenty yeah. I had asthma. Because you there having a, a, a breathing difficulty. Mm. So people took notice. But mental disabilities, I suppose. I yeah. don't really like calling them that. But you know what I mean. Um, and and universities. Hidden disabilities, I suppose. Yeah. Um, people just didn't talk about it. So, but here we are. We are talking yeah, about here it. Here we are. Right. So that TikTok. What what spoke to you? Let me look. Let me look at my list of things, and I will show you what she or tell you. Um, so the first sort of thing she talked about was getting overwhelmed really easily. And at first, okay. I was like, Yeah, no, that's me. I do get overwhelmed easily, but I am a I'm busy mum of three. You know, you make excuses for things. Yeah. And obviously there will be people out there who don't have ADHD who get overwhelmed. And like I say, it's not just the one thing. It's like the list of things mm. that you see that you're like, okay. Um, the, the the first thing that really grabbed me though was the hyper-focus 
I have a crazy ability. So I get distracted really easily all the time. I'm distracted. Like, you know, I'll start, um, even yesterday, I was filling out a diary, a new diary, which I must just show you because it is the most beautiful thing. It's it's part of the, the positivity planner, but it's their bullet journal. Bash. You would love it. You'd love it. I do love it. Um, so I was like, oh, I want to fill this out. And then I was like, oh, I just, I must look up um, different bullet journal layouts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then I got lost on Facebook looking up different journal and then I was like oh I need some coloring pens so that then I can do that I know I have some coloring pens I know they're in that cupboard I don't know I'm gonna have to tidy the whole cupboard and so before long there's me sitting nicely doing my and then I'm tidying a cupboard and it's because I get distracted really easily but there are some instances where I completely focus so hard that I don't even hear or see anything else. And it's okay. like I'm, I've got tunnel, I've got those blink, you know, like horses wear. Mm. And I, that's all I see. So m- most of the time I get distracted. And this is why I don't really get anything done. This is why I think you're a marvel for getting so much done. <laughs> because I literally cannot do it because I'm like, oh, oh, shiny object. Oh, da, da. Um, but but I can hyper focus. You're polarized. You're either like totally distracted yeah. or cannot be distracted by even an earthquake kind of. And the thing is with hyperfocus. So, so for example, um, when I first started my blog, I hyperfocused. Literally, my husband felt like he didn't even know me anymore. We might as well not have lived together because all I could think about was the blog. Um, every evening, I would the children would go to bed, and I would be up until about midnight doing all the coding. This was like yeah. 2014. This was you know, but I you know I'd focus, 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 focus. And then I lose interest. Oh, right. It's like I've spent all that energy on that thing and then I lose yeah. interest. For example, like my YouTube channel, I mean, I'm there's certain high focuses that I that I go back to. So like my YouTube channel or even Instagram or whatever, I will hyper focus, 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 and then I'll lose interest and I'll go and do something else instead. Yeah. Or like I bought myself a cricket machine, hyper focused, making all of the thick lose interest scrapbooking i love scrapbooking now i don't love scrapbooking anymore right. or um just anything anything you can imagine i'm like oh i really must do this i was like an obsessive it. tendency obsessive polarized yeah, I, yeah, I get the thing yeah i can relate with the obsessive thing in that when i like have said i've got to do something like come hell or high water because i say at the end of my videos i have to do tuesday thursday and sunday at 7 p.m yeah i'm like i have to do it because I said I would. I'm like, yeah, I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably that probably saying out loud sounds a bit like whoa, but yeah. So I do. I I get the like having yeah. to. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Right. So that was your that, that was, like was a, a red card for you. You resonated with but that. Yeah, Next one. Thing, new projects and the obsessions over the new projects. I mean, like even for Christmas, I said to my husband, I really want a sewing machine. I want a sewing machine because I want to be able to make my own clothes. Now, my husband, bless his soul, he knows me. And he was like, no. I'm not happy about it. And honestly, it really is like a dagger through the heart because you're like, but I really need one. I need one. I'm going to use it. No. And he knows. And and now, obviously, we're what, August? Yeah. He made the right choice there. I wouldn't have used it. I can see that now. But at the yeah. time, I'm so like, right. So that was that one. Um, <laughs> um, something else that really spoke to me um, and is, is an issue of mine is um, if I know that I have something coming up that day, right. I can't do anything else. Right. Okay. Literally cannot do anything else. So let's pretend. So that I mean, like, and that fills it. Yeah, that's the day. That is the whole day. Even if, let's say, I was going to um, going out for dinner with friends at seven o'clock in the evening, you have to prepare my whole, that whole day. My whole day, my whole day is is basically wasted, and I can't explain why. I don't. If anyone's listening, that they they will get it. Like if they yeah. get it, they get it. And if you can't get it, you won't get it because I can't even explain it to you. Yeah, darling. Yeah. Um, but it's like I just. I don't know if I worry that I might forget to go or, right. or I don't, I don't know, but I literally, 
quite easily and I'm because I have three children and a husband that like shimmies me along a little bit I don't but if I lived alone I probably would sit on the sofa and wait 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 for it and it's just I mean over the years and this is where like the masking comes in I've I re I recognize that I have this problem so I'm like right no I mustn't so what I do is I set myself an alarm for say six o'clock so then I know six o'clock is the thing I'll get an alert to say now you're allowed to think about it make good use of the rest of your day but even this morning I knew I was coming on this live 9 30 thank god you didn't say it was 4 30 or something because I've been like oh my god is it nearly time Um, (laughs) but like even this morning I was like right what can I do I don't really know what to do it's nearly nine it was like 8 30 I was like it's nearly 9 30 what can I do and I just can't I yeah, mean, I cannot explain it. Cannot explain it, but that was the, <laughs> the alarm thing. Just as like a point to all mums, I rel- I live and breathe by the alarm yes. thing. And the reason I do it, and what you're saying is speaking to me a little bit, it's because I know that unless I, if I've got an alarm, I'm allowed to forget about it. Yeah, and I can do whatever I'm doing because the alarm will then stop me. Yeah, and then I can do that I can do that if I haven't got an alarm set I couldn't like sleep or do it you know or if I've got a reminder set or something about something important to happen in the morning or something later in that later that day I'd spend the whole time not focusing because I'd be like is it time to go yet am I gonna like especially the, the big one for me and this sounds insane because I wouldn't forget to pick up my children from school but I worry I'd forget the time no not like forget what time to go but I worry I'd, I would lose focus you lose track you lose track Time. And that is now yeah, so, it's a genetic thing. And I wonder, we spoke about this last week when you were on my live. Yes. Just touched on it. Um, how did you say it's Bella that's had a recent diagnosis as yeah. well, isn't it? Mm. How the doctor had said that Bella, I might have a parcel. No, no, he's gone. Um, <laughs> that Bella will have um coped better, or what I can't remember what the phrase yeah. you used. Because yes. of the systems that you already have in place. Yes. You, it could well be, and I'm not going to just like project a diagnosis onto you, but you, if you have certain tendencies, because you already have systems in place for yeah. your children, both your children now, they'll help you as well. If yeah. it, were, it is a genetic thing, it's and come from yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Well, the alarm thing, definitely. Like my alarms, like give people like, the shakes sometimes if I show I've shown them sometimes on stories when I'm especially when I flick them all off before yeah. like, the end of term because I have like it's time to get up um for me and then time yeah. to get time to finish working and come upstairs and see to the kids time to go downstairs for breakfast <laughs> time to put your shoes on and then the children know it and then I've got like time to think about stopping working and then actually time to leave the house for me yeah. because otherwise I couldn't focus on my work literally yeah. No, it's, I'm, like, it's I'm gonna forget. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna. I'm gonna be late. I'm gonna be late. <laughs> it's the same thing as writing a list. It empties yeah. your mind, yes. and you know that you've written it down, so your brain doesn't have to focus it. And it's yeah. the same thing. If you know that the alarm is going to tell you when to stop, you don't have to clock watch. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, my alarm system sounds about the same. And I've also got ballet. I've got piano yeah. practice. I've got street dance. I've got brownies. I've got. You have. <laughs> I can get rid of a midday alarm now because I don't have to pick William up at lunchtime. I, I know all day. I know. But I, I have. Know. I have forgotten my children. If if for whatever reason, <laughs> I and it's not because I'm. And the, the most annoying. Thing, I remember what. I mean, it's only happened twice. Um, but the, the school rang me and they were like, "You need to pick Grace up." And all I've been doing was sat on the sofa. I'd be trusted to look at the time clearly because I did. I did forget them once. And it's so, not um, good for productivity. Yes, that's the other thing that gets me. It's not good if your if your focus is always like, oh, quit. You know what? You yeah. can't focus on what you do. And I find I think you find the same, especially when you've had to fit in working around having the children, three school runs and things. The time you have is so such a tiny amount of time. You've got to squeeze as much as you can into it. Anyway. I am getting distracted. What was the next bullet point? <laughs> <laughs> um, losing things. All right, the time. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing is my phone, which probably a lot of people can relate to, but I literally would put it down and then it would be like, where's my phone? And it became a running jo- And I said to the, the psychiatrist, I said, I felt like before I realised it was a thing, that I was getting early onset Alzheimer's. 
Genuinely, I was yeah, Googling that's everything. Awful. What is wrong with me? Even the children were like, you you can't have lost it again. I was like, no, I have. I don't I don't understand where it goes. I've got and, two and one, of the, one of which is that we don't have enough pockets. <laughs> my husband and my teenager are like, because hey, and I've got yes. I've got Apple Watch. Ninety nine percent of the things I use my Apple Watch for are swiping up and pressing it and pinging my phone, and they're like, it's here. How have you lost it again? And I'm like, because I don't have any pockets. <laughs> so <laughs> <that's> like, <laughs> um, impulse shopping, impulse okay. shopping. Classic. Last night, I decided I needed some new underwear at three o'clock this morning because I'm suffering with insomnia at the moment. And so okay. I ordered myself some underwear from Marks and Spencer's last night. I really don't need new underwear. Well, I do. everyone always needs new underwear. You know, you should you should get yourself new underwear more frequently than people do. But it was yeah. three o'clock in the morning, and I was buying myself underwear. But it's it, like 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 the um, cricket machine. If I'd have been allowed my sewing machine, impulse buying, seeing right. something. I mean, Instagram is terrible for this, and this is why I've had to like mute some people that always share new clothes. So I'm like, I need that t-shirt, or I need that jumper, or I I need that new machine, or I oh, I wish I had a coffee machine. I don't even drink coffee. What do I need a coffee machine for? right don't speak drink Harry. don't speak that <laughs> um talking non-stop when on a subject i know which is very handy in the business that i'm in it means i can just talk but it's really not handy when i dominate conversation with friends and over the years i've i if i'm sat with like say i've gone for a chat around my friend's house or something i have to like mentally sit there and be like don't butt in don't butt in don't butt in don't butt in and then I spend so long telling myself not to butt in I'm not concentrating on what they're saying oh so I, might, I might as well have butted in at least I'd have joined in the conversation but I yeah I really and the reason and this is a another symptom if you like is because the only way we as a collective ADHD family uh, feel that we can show that we understand what mm. somebody is talking about is to share our own experience. Mm. But then it becomes all me, 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 me. And it's like, oh no, I mustn't, must, mustn't butt in, mustn't butt in, mustn't, you know, because I'll be sitting there going, oh no, you know, oh, my friend might be going, oh, my mum died nobody's mum's died I just don't know what made me say that but the, and I'd be like oh I know exactly what you mean because my husband's mum died when he was younger yeah. and, I, and then I'll start talking about it and it's like no don't butt in okay so talking I'll start butting in procrastinating I'm a terrible one for procrastinating planning I love a planner as you can tell I've got this notebook I've got this new notebook. I've got a whole bookcase full of notebooks. I love a notebook, love bullet journaling. I love anything to do with stationery, all of that. Plan, plan, plan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and this. And, this. and then I never do it. <laughs> so plan it. Plan, 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 plan. And then I never do it. So that's a real key. That's a key one, that one. Mm. Um, anxiousness. Anxiousness. And this isn't ADHD per se um and i can't remember it's oh it's rejection it's something like rejection sensitivity dis dysfunction or uh, but it's basically um and it's terrible because we live in a society that does texting where you can't read the uh, emotion written behind the yeah. text I um, sometimes worry about that, especially if it's a sensitive subject. I think this is going to worry that you're going to upset somebody. Yeah. You know, or, well, like, I'm or, terribly worried about upsetting people. Oh, yeah, see, you're going to just come out of this and be like, I think I have ADHD. I think, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm translating only everything you've said so far. But yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it even might be um, on the school playground and a mum might look at me with a slight frown. I'll then think, God, did I do something? Have I, oh yeah, could I have oh, like and thinking it's your fault when someone yeah, else, like maybe she's in a bad mood with me when really like her dog died this morning and it's got nothing to do with me. But yeah. I will and always over, I or be playing a conversation like oh yeah, dear, what did I say? Yeah. Like, did I say that? Or, or I um, wish I'd have said that, like, mm. like you know, and that's a terrible, terrible affliction Maybe. to have because you are constantly doubting yourself and worrying. Yeah. 
You don't put yourself forward for things in case you get rejected. Yeah. The I'm idea across the wrong way. Yeah. Hoping that, hoping that the way it came across is how you meant it, not perceived a different way. Yeah. I, and to be honest, I worry about that on here as well, especially when there's sensitive topics that I really want to dive in on and really want to sort of say that you show support for and you want you want to help and support. But then you think, well, if I say it this way, I might upset these people. And you say it this way, you upset these people. And trying to walk the line of saying something helpful and supportive without coming across wrong can be really anxiety inducing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I suppose it's the same as like the autism spectrum. You get, you know, the high functioning autistic yeah. And then, you know, get your low functioning as well. I probably am a high functioning ADHD person. Um, I just love you lots. Love you too, Lucy. She's on holiday. Go and enjoy your holiday. Instead of watching me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have achieved lots. But it's, it's always in the back of my mind. There's There's things that I wish I could have done that there's, there's just like an invisible thing that means I can't do it, which is silly because there's no such thing as can't. My mum drummed that into me as a child. Um, but it's like a, it's like I've got somebody pushing me back the whole time and it's myself, myself doing it. But it's like, you can't do it. You'll probably fail. Like, I did I mention I'm starting a course? Like I'm doing, I'm going to run a course. Oh, no, no, you're running for, I thought you would, I'm like, no, so I'm, doing, course? I'm, I'm currently doing a course, course that is teaching me how to create a course. Amazing. And I Amazing. wanted, to, like, I wanted to do this for so long, for so long, so many years, and I've just never had the courage to do it. And this is my year, Re. I am, I am going to be doing it. I'm going to be running, I'm just going to be, I'm hoping that it will be built and ready to roll for January and it's going to be helping mums with a slight like I'm going to aim it towards people that struggle like me with like being organized yeah. and um for decluttering the house so it's mm -hmm. going to help people to declutter the house top to bottom and clear their mind and everything so that is but that is something for years years that I've been procrastinating on and feeling like no what if I fail what if everyone laughs at me or nobody buys the course or and all these limiting beliefs that are it's like pushes me and like no you can't do it just don't do it and do it and can't fail yeah um I, I year, I'm like yeah. no I'm doing it god damn it um yeah so please please buy the course <laughs> definitely oh well I will be very keen to learn more about that and we'll support you in any way I can like, so well yes your, your house doesn't need decluttering but anyway <laughs> right let me just think right one more thing insomnia something I am struggling with right now um can't relax I think that's probably the last thing I'll talk about um I, I can't relax I can't <laughs> relax <laughs> I, there's nothing I, really I so to say, say it's like yeah, a, it's say like, it's like a Sunday, <laughs> and everyone everyone's like, "Shall we watch a DVD?" Or does anyone watch DVDs anymore? Or let's watch something off Netflix. Okay. So we'll sit there and we're like, right, laid on the sofa. My husband will fall asleep. It's a dad's passageway, right to passageway of becoming mm. a father as they fall asleep during movies. He's, he's asleep. The children are all there watching that, and I'll be like this. I'm just going to go and do the dishwasher and then I'll go and, do, and then I'll come and sit back down again. Be writing something down. Yeah. I can't. I cannot just sit there and do nothing. The only time I can sit and do nothing is if I'm reading because I'm not doing nothing. My brain is busy because I'm reading. That's the only time yeah. my body physically can, or if I'm asleep, but even then my mind is going working over time. Um, but I cannot relax I can't do nothing and it's not because of some belief that I am not allowed to relax or anything I physically cannot do it it's like I have ants in my and I just I need to I'm just going to do this I'm just going to go and do this and then I'll come back yeah and I, I don't think I've ever sat through a whole movie unless it's like the cinema where I have to sit in my seat which is traumatic for me but um you know I have to get up and go and do something I just can't I cannot sit still so there are it other resonates things. with me, but I'm I always assumed it's because I've got so much to do. But then I struggle with like yoga it's and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean we all have lots to do. And it's probably it's probably one of those things that everyone would relate to. 
But when you add it up with some of the other things, that's Definitely. when it becomes a bigger picture. But yeah, there is a lot to do. But I just, yeah, I can't do nothing. I've never been able to relax. Like people go on holiday and they lay on sunbeds for hours. I can't do it. I'd be like, I'm bored. Can we get, can we, should we go in the pool? Can we go to the beach? Should we go to Sandcastle? Can we do anything? I just, I, I watch them. I've watched them with fascination fascination for years they're just laying there i mean some of them have gone to sleep but some of them aren't they're just laying there awake and i'm like <laughs> i'm so bored watching you how are you not bored so yeah that's that's the last thing i say but um there are so many more things there's so many more things on my list which i could talk about all day um jenna's just if, saying if me i could relate to it all i resonated yeah, if any of these have resonated, go and just Google adult female ADHD and just make a note of all the symptoms that you can relate to and just build a picture. Um, the diagnosis. OK, so if you are watching this in Wales, obviously you are in Wales. I apologise massively because this is going to really make you feel sad. You are going to have to do it through your GP and follow the NHS okay. timeline. It's not a short thing, no. unfortunately. Wales um, haven't got a system the same as England. I don't know about Scotland, so I can't speak for Scotland, um, but I'm, I'd imagine theirs is different as well. Um, so if you're in Wales, what you need to do, go oh, and in England. So this is England and Wales. Go and Google it female adult adhd there aren't many articles are out there look at the male ones as well children adhd symptoms and everything and just make yourself a list make yourself a list of all of the things that resonate yeah. is then, there anything on the nhs website with um like they have with most things they've got the actual nhs website it's like got the like almost a list of symptoms i i want to say no because i right. don't think I don't know. There okay. might be, but right. all the things that I looked up were other people's experiences. I think Healthline might have had <laughs> one, um, but mostly it uh, it was like external. Like, like if I when I write mine, mine will be there. You know, it, yeah. I don't. It might be there, but it'll probably just be like generic adult. Maybe you're just generic ADHD. Okay. Um, so yeah, write a list of all things then. Both England and Wales and Scotland and Scotland. I can't speak for Scotland specifically, so take it with a pinch of salt. Go to your GP. I had to ring mine because obviously COVID couldn't go in. Go to your GP and say, Hi, I think I believe I have ADHD. These are my reasons. Okay. I would like to be put forward for an assessment. In okay. Wales, this is where we split paths. Wales, you will have to wait for your NHS assessment date. It could be like two to three years, which is yeah. so depressing. So depressing. You <laughs> might want to consider moving to England. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's depressing. But think of it this way. You have come this far. Yeah. And wait another two to three years. Yeah. The, the biggest thing for me before I move on to like the England side of things is was feeling like I knew I knew that there was a reason. Yeah. Because if if you are able to write down all of these things, if you come away with a list, you probably have it. If there's one or two that you uh, resonate with, probably not. Yeah. But if you've got if you've got um, a long list in front of you, you probably have it. And if you get a diagnosis, which if you have a long list like that, you probably will. Um, your options are nothing. You can just sit and just have the knowledge that you have it, mm. which actually is more yes. liberating than it mm. sounds. When you realise you're part of a club, I guess, you're like, oh, my God, I'm not the only one that does mm. this. It helps massively. It's like when you become a mum and you realise you're not the only one who hasn't had sleep for a month, you, you know, or you're not the only one whose toddler is having a tantrum. It doesn't stop the toddler having the tantrum, but it makes you feel better to know you're not alone. So just knowing it, just knowing you've written that list 
and probably you have it. Go and join. There's Facebook groups that you can join. There's a sense of community and it's not just me to it. Mm. The second option is you can do various like CBT things, um, which I don't know if I could be bothered to go down that route. I'm very stubborn. I don't know if that's uh, an ADHD thing in terms of <laughs> I feel like they won't work for me. CBT, that's not going to work for me. My brain is too clever. I will know what's going on. It's not going to work. So I'm not going to go to that. The third thing is medication, uh, which I am on the waiting list for. Um, for I'm just laughing because uh, Lucy here is saying typical Wales. No, no, but Wales yeah. is so good for so many things, though. So it, it's just unfortunate this and one thing it's it's let you down on um, I'm, I'm laughing because jenna who's in the comments who i know very well personally uh said she was told she has ocd but listening she thinks she has adhd she can't watch tv she can't focus she doesn't sleep um but jenna is more organized than me like she makes me look but it's sure. a coping mechanism so yeah, yeah jenna, um, she's you wonderful, are... amazing and like literally puts me to shame because she like does all the crafts for the children she's she's amazing but we're quite, I think we get on because we're quite similar in that we are quite, uh, have, well, we both like listen to, listen to your list. <laughs> I, I resonate with all of them and I get that she does too. Yeah. Well, OCD <laughs> is definitely a thing because it's a control thing. Yeah. Because your mind is such a jumbled mess. You will have, both of you will have learned over the years, you have to take control of this. So I'm going to control this and control this and control this and control this and that makes it better. And those are people that have known me like my whole life. I wasn't always as organised as I am now. I feel like I've had to put this stuff in place to make sense of the mess, which I thought was because I had so many children and children with additional needs is the reason. I am what you would probably call a recovering procrastinator. I was brought up a procrastinator. Yeah. yeah, which is a common, it's a common thing. Um, so, I don't know which is easier to say. So, yeah, so medication is, is the thing, which the medication from people that I've spoken to, it's like, imagine your head is full of bumblebees. Oh, wow. And they're just buzzing all the time and you can't focus. You can't, you're just like constantly on the go. And then you take the medication and the bumblebees leave your head. Wow. And for the first time in forever, first time in forever. I was so, I was so <laughs> sorry. I just, I, <laughs> um, you're just like, I can focus because you can't. Um, another thing is you can't. Um, I mean, multitasking isn't a thing anyway, but like, <laughs> like you can't, I can't multitask, but I definitely cannot. Uh, but for the first time, it's like, okay, I'm going, so like me the other day with my planner, I would have just written in my planner. The end. It wouldn't have been writing in my planner, oh, I need a pen. Oh, I'm going to tidy up my cupboard. Oh, I might as well tidy that cupboard as well. And now look at all the mess and oh, I'm overwhelmed. It would have just been, I'm writing in my planner like a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it and that's where I'm really hoping unfortunately there's a huge wait to to have medication yeah. so even though I'm diagnosed I have another like three months to wait until any medication or anything and I might find that I don't like the medication yeah. um and that I would rather the CBT route or just the knowledge that I have it because just knowing you have it does make you feel better so if you are in England this is what you need to do so you've gone to the doctor, you've told them, they will say, yeah, we'll put you forward for uh, a, an assessment. Wales, you'll have to go down the NHS route. In England, this is very important. You have to, at the point where you're asking for an assessment, you have to say, I would like to invoke, if you like, my right to choose my provider, my, my whoever is going to do my assessment. It's called the right to choose scheme. So you you say, I would like to invoke my right to choose psych, psych, psychiatrist, it's not psychologist, psychiatrist UK, psych right. UK for short. They do have a long waiting list, but it's not as long as the NHS. So you say, I want to use my right to choose and go through psych UK. 
They have to do that. In England, you have to, the doctors have to give you your right to choose who your provider is. So Site UK okay. is like a private thing, but the NHS use them. They don't find it. So it's still NHS, but mm. you're using uh, Site UK instead. Then you will wait a few weeks and you will get an email. Make sure you give your doctor your email and phone number at this point, because then you will get an email from Psych UK saying, hi, welcome to Psych UK. Here is your portal login. We, um, we will get in touch with you to fill out some forms, yada, 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 and they take it from there. So I contacted Psych UK probably... March, April time, I would say. Mm. So in January, I was like, oh my God, this is me. It took me a few months to to be brave enough. And I cannot stress this enough that I understand it's scary because of that rejection thing. The I, I was mm. so, and I would message Louise. I would be like, Louise, what if the doctor t- laughs at me and refuses yeah. to send me? for an assessment what if what if it isn't and I'm wasting people's time and so it took me a couple of months of of really sort of digesting it all and going no no I know this is me I this all makes sense all of the pieces are coming together this is I have to do this for my own mental mental state Uh, so about April time got in touch with them I finally got my assessment in the middle of July so it take, took a few months, but again, compared to the NHS way, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, and I honestly, within the two weeks after the assessment, I was so worried and I'm part of a couple of Facebook groups. I was like, they did, he didn't believe me. You know, he was grilling me the whole time. He probably wasn't grilling me, but it's that like anxiety of like, no, he didn't believe me. He's going to come back and say, I've wasted everybody's time, whatever. Got the letter you have combined type, which I'll go into in a second. Combined type ADHD. Ta-da! Would you like medication? Blah, 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 blah. And yeah. it's just taken from there. Um, so I will say... I, will just... up, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to ask brief if you could just briefly, what was the diagnosis process? What was that assessment? Like face-to-face? I, mean, I found a really Zoom. stressful. So, no, it's, it's on a portal. So it's on a Zoom, I guess, but within the, the portal. And he, so bef- so when I sent off all my forms that they send you when you first sign up to their thing, um, he basically went through all of them. So it's like a questionnaire. Uh, they will talk to you. They will ask you questions like, do you struggle to relax? Yes or no? Explain further. Um, do you um, talk a lot? Do you struggle making plans? And all the things that I've talked about here, it's in the questionnaire. It's like, yes, 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 yes. And you just give examples. Now, I <coughs> I didn't, and I, I'll just quickly say, Psych UK, their waiting time is about eight months at the moment. I was lucky, April to July, um, but the more people are talking about it, the more people yes. are signing up. So, um, yeah. But um, so I don't remember struggling as a child. So on the questionnaire, it mentions childhood. And it's like, when you were a child, da, 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 da. Don't, don't No, I was fine. I was fine. And so during the talk with the psychiatrist, he was like, okay, now we really need to delve deeper. You can't have suddenly... And the NHS doctors won't believe that you're suddenly ADHD, which is what everyone's suddenly going. Oh, you've watched the TikTok. But I haven't had that, but people have had that. Watch the TikTok and suddenly you've got ADHD. It's like, okay, no, really delve back into your memory. Mm. Did you struggle as a child? And I genuinely didn't believe that I did. And it's only he started asking me questions like... um, uh, did you, um, did your teachers, your school reports ever say that you could have tried harder? And that like unlocked something in my mind. Yes. So I was like, oh no, I do remember. Because my mum kept, I mean, anyone who follows me will know my mum kept everything that I have, all my toys, all my school reports, all my school books, everything. So she, I have my school reports and it says, you know, needs to concentrate more in class. 
my memory of school is that I concentrated. Um, but clearly I didn't. I was a daydreamer. And this is where... It, by yourself. <laughs> I did. This, this is where... <laughs> This is where girls and boys differ. And this is why I never caused a problem because many girls, and I won't say all girls, because, and this is where tomboy girls get lumped in with the boy mm. diagnosis type things. But many girls are just shy, just, you know, head Dreaming. down, focused, but really they're daydreaming, doodling. Mm. I would doodle on all of my exercise books. That's the thing. I'm not concentrating on what the teacher's saying. I'm doodling. Mm -hmm. I'm making pretty pentagonal stars, trying to make them completely, 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 complete. No, it's a bit off. I'll start again. No, this one. Better, 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 better. Or little hearts that are completely symmetrical. Or That's what I spent my time doing. But I came out with A-stars and A's. And that's yeah. why a lot of people are like, well, you clearly, you are fine. No, I'm just lucky that I'm clever. I'm clever yeah. and was able to, this is another thing, um, uh, cram. I crammed the day yeah. before my exams. I have a photogenic memory. Very mm. lucky. I have a photogenic memory. I crammed the like few days leading up to each exam. I did well. My coursework, I didn't do well because I did. I wasn't interested. I didn't do homework. In my, I don't know. Did you used to have a homework diary where it'd be like so you write? Yeah, in. I was. So, um, yeah, I have something. Yeah, I don't know if I should no, share no, that. Share that with okay. you. I um, was taught to sign a signature. Uh, so that um someone else didn't have to do that so i could sign my own i did the same i did the same no i was taught to do it by someone else oh, you were no, taught ah uh, so that someone I didn't have myself, to involved. i can still i can still do my mum's signature now i can do my mum's signature straight away i can do it no, 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 like, let me show you how to do this so that you i don't have to get involved yeah anyway i don't discuss that sorry yeah. <laughs> that's all um, I'm but no, I, I didn't, I didn't really, you know, but when, say, say history, my teacher would be like, right, your homework is due in on Wednesday. I would write in history and I'd write Tuesday and circle it. So I knew on Tuesday, that's when I would do my homework. That's how I got through everything with deadline, yeah. last minute, mm. you know, that was, and that is the common thing is doing everything last minute because we as an ADHD family, uh, do well with deadlines and um, uh, what's the, like, time limits. This is why timers yeah. work really well, because it's like, oh, my God, I have to get it done because of the timer. Oh, my God, I have to have do my revision because the exam is tomorrow. Um, and so that's how I did well. I did well. I'm lucky I'm clever. And I am lucky I do well with, like, last minute, yeah. like, cramming. Um, but, yeah, lots so of much girls. Sorry. So I'm um, just gonna so much that you're saying. I feel that I struggled with more, and then since I started blogging and kind of doing all this and like running our own business, I listened to all these books that I thought would be about business, but turned out to be about mindset. And from all those mindset books, I've put into practice so many things that I feel have helped me not recover from is the wrong term for, but that with all these things you're talking about you manage that I had to, yeah that yeah. I had to, the things I've had to put in place because I was struggling so much with everything you're talking about and now I have very rigid things I have to follow yeah. so I don't fall into these traps yeah and like fascinating and and all those things yeah and it and it's just you know and it, well now you can see this is why the children and I I look at my children I think I can see it. I can see their tendencies. I've always thought that um, one of them, I don't know if they're listening, um, has autistic tendencies, but very high functioning. So it always, yeah. I, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because that's that's wrong, but it doesn't affect that yeah. child. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't show in, it doesn't show. No, in not so much. So, um I've I've sort of let it slide, but now that I know where I am in my life, I'm I'm not going to suddenly like right. We're going to have you all diagnosed and things because 
they're fine, but I know that I'm going to have to help them through life with different skill sets like yeah. you have learned, you've put in place. I'm going to teach them those things so that they can cope. Obviously, if they were struggling, then I would push for a diagnosis or whatever, but they're, they're not. So it is more the same as me. Yeah. Like, I've gone through life. I'm 37. I'm fine. You are. But... I could have been better. Yeah, and it could have been, yeah. The, the, the thing for me, there's been sort of elation at, oh my God, I. it's not just me, but it's also been absolute <sighs> sadness. I can't even think, it's not despair. It's like... Frustration? Huh? Frustration. Frustration you... and just absolute, just sadness, just... I cried. I cried when I got the diagnosis because it was like, what could I have been? What mm. could what could I have achieved if I'd have known this sooner? Um, yeah. And that's it's silly because I've achieved a lot and I'm not miserable in my life. I have a, a loving husband. Mm. I've got three beautiful children. Mm. I've got a home. I, I have a business. Yeah. I have it. But I just think, oh, if I hadn't of had these little difficulties along the way or just little things that made me feel like I can't, that I'm not good enough and and because of that rejection thing. Mm. Um, could I have been better? And I probably could have, which is really maddening because you think, oh, damn, you know, I could have made more money and, and bought us the biggest house or achieved more and have more of a sense of achievement. But then... Um, one thing I will just say that if you decide to parent your child strategies that can only help them and this is something I said I put out a video last night about strategies to help parents of children with autism and what I said in that video is all these strategies help all children they're just they're just good sense for parenting for life and and these strategies for the ADHD are just good common sense things that anyone could benefit not everyone will need them and require them but everyone can benefit from them so whether you parent your children that are on the spectrum that have ADHD or they're neurotypical if you teach them this stuff it's only going to help yeah oh for so, sure I mean it's you know it's just being able to manage your time better and yeah. clean your house more efficiently and, and various you know it's just yeah they're, they're not things that are just for no no, no. they help everyone they'll help everyone in some way won't they yeah in order to um and I think I stress people like I think that obviously like everyone I'm I'm not everyone's cup of tea nobody is anyone's everyone's cup of tea but um and if you're a very laid back go with the flow kind of person I would probably stress you out <laughs> but but most people I think when would like to just feel lit, like everything's just a little easier and in flow. And that's how I feel. If there's anything yeah. I can learn, the, the number of all my audiobooks, you look at all my audiobooks, they're all about how to make life a little bit easier, how to make be a bit more organised, how to be yeah. a bit more productive, just how to squeeze a bit more out of the day. <laughs> yeah, because, and we need it, you know, and even if you don't have ADHD or whatever, like we all are so busy. So if we can, if we can learn to be more organised and, structure our day in a way that means we get more time to sit and relax or more time to play with the kids or just just less time cleaning because actually we've like organized it in a way that it, you know it's just everything's just cutting not cutting corners but just rounding just the corners. time yeah <laughs> yeah so Stephanie's asking how long did it take your children to accept a new routine so I'm not sure if that's for you or for me for me I don't think I've ever implemented anything overnight no. everything just been um improving upon existing things so moving from when I just had one child and I was very disorganized and would for forget things a lot and feel really guilty because he wasn't in the right costume for various days and things it was that, like, right, well, how can I stop this from happening? This has felt awful. I want to stop this from happening. I'd implement something else. And it'd be baby steps to where I am now. And I've got four and I have to be organised. But yeah, I don't think any new routine can ever be like, right, I'm transforming everything overnight. It just um, never that. I mean, just um, baby steps. for me, I probably, my, my girls, when, when William Dream, we've only got four minutes left. Um... My girls were three, uh, no, four and six when I was like, right, I need to take 
control here. So William was yeah. one, so one, four, and six, yeah. Um, and I was like, right, we're going to do 10-minute tidy ups regularly throughout the day. Yes, in the beginning, they were like, oh, I hate tidying. But it's like, go on, <laughs> let's make it fun. And I think making it fun is the, is the key. So we put music on yeah. and we, I would do it with them. I wouldn't go, right, go and tidy your room. We will do it together. And over time, I mean, now Grace is 10. So that's four years have passed. I can say, go and tidy your room and she will go and do it. Is it perfect? No. And that's something else. Perfectionist tendencies. I have to let it go and just go, done is better than perfect. So now it's taken maybe four, well, it hasn't taken four years, but in four years, I don't have to go and tidy with them. I can just go, right, you've got 10 minutes, go and tidy up. And I regularly share, like, in my stories. Um, yesterday, I was like, right, we're, we're getting ready to go. This is the mess we're dealing with. I've told them they've got 10 minutes. And then I showed the after. And, and I had messages going, oh, my God, I wish my children would tidy up in 10 minutes. So, but I've been doing this for four years. Yeah. And you I'm have just, to stick you know, at it, don't you? Yeah. You can't and be you like, have, we're doing this can, now. <laughs> yeah, and you can't expect them to do it perfectly. You have to accept that you're going to have to do it with them and remind them. I still now, I'm like, right, before we have dinner, 10 minutes tidy up, put the music on and off they go. Um, but they don't just take it upon themselves to tidy. I don't think there's a child, child on this planet that does that. I don't take it upon myself to tidy. I write it down. Tidy the house. <laughs> You know, it's like you still you have to remind yourself to right. I'm going to do the kitchen now. Like it's not just. I mean, it becomes part of your life because you're an adult, but you still. Do you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. I still have to like think about it. It's not okay. um, for me. It's the fear that keeps me going. I know that sounds awful, but the, knowing how awful it's felt before to be in such a mess, I couldn't climb out of it. Yeah. The reason I put washing on every day is the dread of it being that mountain to have to climb. Yeah. And I know I don't want to go back there. And it's the fear of going back there that makes yeah. me do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's um, All right. lovely. Oh, lovely <laughs> chatting with you. Lovely, lovely to chat with you. I shall see you soon. Bye, lovely. Bye. Bye. Well, if you've watched all the way through that, thank you so much for sticking with me. Like I said, the audio and the visuals weren't perfect, but... I hope you got some value from that. I know it really was quite pivotal for me. It took quite a long while after that for me to actually speak to a doctor and ask them, do you think I need an assessment? And then... So if you want to learn more about the ADHD assessment process for an adult woman, then you can click on the video on screen now and that should tell you where I'm at and or what's been going on and hopefully be helpful and informative to you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all those YouTube-y things and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.